At the beginning of this year, Ixo Collections came out with a new 1 to 8 scale project, and that is the Peugeot 205 GTI. They've sent me out all of the packages that have been available so far, and I'm building that on the channel. Now, along the way, they also released the Porsche 917 in a super cool golf livery that was raced back in the day, also made pretty popular by the Steve McQueen movie Le Mans. So just like with the Peugeot, I'm getting monthly packages. This one I actually started with package one and have about six months in so far. And every month I get a new package with new parts in it. Now, as you can see in the first couple of packages, there are mostly a couple of general parts, uh, some for the exterior, some for the interior, and also some wheels in this case, just to give you a general taste of what the build will be like and what the parts will look like as well. Now, for now, I'm just going to be skipping a couple of those boxes as those don't really fit in with the style that I like to build these. So I'm setting those aside for now and starting off with the first package that is actually on the engine side of things as I have pretty much all the engine components in already and this way I can finish the engine in one video. So with that said, let's just start on the engine. A couple of these parts are actually made out of metal, some are made out of plastic, and it's a nice heavy piece in the end. So I'm really curious to know what the actual fully completed model will feel like. I'm pretty sure it will be quite hefty. So some of these screws are pretty tight to get in as you need to tap the actual thread in there sometimes as it's filled up with paint or powder coat or any other coating that is on these parts. Therefore, it can be a little bit hard to get them in, but just a bit of pressure and making sure you have the right bit on your screwdriver will help out a lot. Now, I'm not gonna be showing all of the screwing in this video as that would be a very big amount of screwing and I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be on YouTube. So I'm just gonna be putting these parts together and uh, not show the actual screwing uh, most of the time but just know that most of these parts will be screwed together and some of them are actually a press fit or just held in place by other parts covering it later on. If you are familiar with these kinds of kits, you might already know this, but a lot of these parts are actually functional. So when screwing them down, you don't have to screw it down all the way in some cases, as uh, the tighter you put the screws in, the less functional the actual model will be. Now, in most cases, they will need to be fully tightened, but on some of these movable parts, you will need to take in consideration to leave a bit of slack so it is still a free to move part. So like I said, not all of the parts need to be screwed together. Some are a snap or a uh, friction fit as well. You could glue them too, but I found so far that most of the time that is not necessary. Sometimes the fit of a part is a bit loose, but later on in the build, it will be closed in by some other parts. So then again, it could be glued in, but it's not always necessary. And uh, it's built and designed in a way that you should not need to glue it. And if you should follow the instructions closely, then you will uh, get a notification if you actually do need to glue it. But that is just a very rare occasion.
While on the subject of gluing anyway, I figured I'd show this part too as I did actually use a little bit of glue to keep these wires or hoses in place. Uh, they again are a press fit just like some of the other components but are a bit of a looser press fit. Once you've put them on once and then take them off, uh, the part has been deformed or conformed to the actual shape that it needs to stay in place with but loses its actual grip strength. So in that case, it is a nice addition to add a little bit of glue just to make sure that it stays in place. Now you don't have to, but if you ever need to take one of these parts off and then put it back in place, it won't really stay in place as well. So a little bit of glue goes a long way for these hoses. Luckily there are some spare parts for a couple of these smaller delicate pieces which can get lost quite easy. During the build somehow I do actually make a couple of mistakes as I don't pay close enough attention to the actual instructions and therefore forget to add a couple of parts here and there every now and again. In this case I forgot to add uh, one of these rollers for a uh, belt that needed to be on there so I had to disassemble the entire uh, valve and also all of the cylinders and uh, yeah once that was put back in place it was all good to go.
These are pointing in the wrong direction, but I'll figure that out later. The actual assembly process of this piece here, I think this has something to do with the throttle. I'm not sure what it's called, but it was pretty complicated and took quite a while as it was stacking a lot of parts on top of each other using super small screws, making sure that everything was still moving and functional and also paying very close attention to the instructions which part need to go where and also which direction they need to be pointing in as you can pretty really yeah fairly easily screw this up terribly and then have to start all over again in full transparency i did need to take this apart a couple of times dropped a lot of parts on the floor and have been searching for various screws for a while by this point This is where I figured out that these were pointing in the wrong direction, so all of them had to be turned around into the right direction. I figured at this point I had pretty much all of the parts to finish the engine off, but um, when I applied these small brackets for some of the other wiring that is to come at a later stage, I kind of underestimated how many wires there actually are on this engine. Now I will be applying a lot of wires at the end of this video, but that isn't even close to all of the wiring, so this one will be even more detailed than I thought it would be. So during the assembly of this actual model, I have come across a lot of parts. Not all of them have equal quality of finishing on them. Most of them are really nice, but in this case, I thought myself the exhaust could have been a little bit better. They were tightly fitted together. They had a pretty big seam line and not all of the parts snapped or fit together as well as you'd want them to. Now I could just remove this all, strip the paint, remove all of the mold lines, and finish the entire exhaust as it probably should have been from the factory but then again that is a ton of work and most of this will never be seen so i'm letting this one slide but i'm not really happy with the way that, that exhaust looks to be fully honest With the first one of two actual distributors now finished, I can move on to the wiring for the first half of the engine. Now there is a small roll included with uh, a little bit extra wire than you would need in the end, but you do need to pay very close attention to the instructions as every single wire needs to be cut to an exact length. 
Once the wire is cut, you can just simply put it onto the distributor, then route it correctly, looking at the instructions again on where it needs to go, and then put it on the actual side of the engine uh, on top of the spark plug. This entire process for the first half of the engine took quite a while, but it is really satisfying seeing all the engine wiring come together and the details on this engine stacking up. And then I remembered I still needed to do the other side as well. One small trick I did discover is to add one of these Torx bits to your screwdriver in some of these uh, sets. They actually have a hole in the center and the small pieces fit in there perfectly, making it a sort of press in place tool, which is a lot easier to do and doesn't really hurt your fingers as bad. Though keep in mind, you don't need to drop these as you can lose them quite easily and you need a lot of them. And about 30 minutes later, the other half of the engine was wired as well, which was a lot simpler and quicker to do than the previous half. But nonetheless, another amount of detail has been added, which makes it look even cooler. Now that's it for this first installment. The engine is mostly finished. There will probably be a couple more parts and pieces added to it and a further stage in the build. But for now, that's it on the engine side of things. I've seen a couple of the packs that will be coming out in the following months and it looks like it's going to be focusing on the main chassis itself so that is really exciting again as with the other builds like this it will take a couple more months before i have enough parts in and we'll be back on this video series as soon as i can